cables. You see them every day when you look at your TV, but you're unsure what they do and what choices you have. After viewing this video, you will have a full understanding of what the different wires are and their functions. Let's start with the basic hookup for cable boxes and wires with the coaxial cable. This cable is made up of a plastic shield that surrounds a metallic shield, which surrounds the center core. This cable is used to carry high frequencies or broadband signals. In this case, it will carry audio and video. First, you have a cable box that functions as a receiver, receiving a cable signal, and a transmitter, transmitting cable to your television set. In order for cable to get from your wall to the cable box, you need this coaxial, or RF cable. The next step is getting audio and video from your cable box to the television. This can also be done with an RF cable. Connect one end to the out of the cable box and connect the other end to the in on the TV. Make sure that your television set is set to channel 3 and remains on channel 3 in order to change channels when a cable box is hooked up. The TV is set to channel 3 which is the open signal and you change channels on the cable box which is feeding cable to your TV via the open channel. Let's now take a look at the second level of audio and video wires. Composite cables are a step up from coax cables. They bring audio and video, but on separate wires, giving you a higher quality signal. Composite cables are made up of yellow, red, and white connectors. The yellow connector carries video, the red carries the right channel of audio, and the white carries the left channel of audio. Together, you will get a video signal and stereo audio. As we saw before, you need an RF cable from your wall to the cable box, bringing video from the cable outlet to the cable box. This time, instead of hooking up another RF cord from the cable box, we will use the composite cables. Turn your TV to channel 3. Plug in the RF cord from the wall to the cable box. Then plug in the composite cables to the out on the back of the cable box. Make sure you connect the yellow to yellow, red to red, and white to white. Now plug in the other end of the composite cables to your television. Make sure to connect the colors correctly as you do with the cable box. You will have to use the TV video or input button on your remote to change the input setting on your TV. You now have audio and video reaching the input on the back of the cable box through an RF cable, and you're sending audio and video to your television with the composite cables. The next connector we are going to look at is the S-Video cable, which is an abbreviation for separate video. The composite cables differ from the S-Video cable because it carries video using two separate wires, whereas the composite cables carries a mixed signal. Follow the same steps from the last section, but this time, with the composite cables, only plug in the audio. And instead of the yellow video cable, use the S video cable. Be careful when plugging in this cable, as the connectors are fragile. You will have to use the TV video or input button on your remote to change the input selection on your TV. So far we have looked at three different types of analog cables used with the standard digital cable box. Let's now take a look at the analog cables used to watch high definition video. The next cable we are going to look at is the component cable. This cable is used to view a digital video in a higher quality and high definition, but is still an analog cable. Component means that the video signal is broken into parts, and those parts are carried by three separate cables. Video is broken into three major colors, red, green, and blue, but each wire doesn't carry a separate color signal. In fact, one cable carries an RGBS signal, the other RGBHV, and RG and SB. As you did with the previous cables, hook the red, green, and blue connectors to the out of your cable box and to the in on your TV. Make sure you match the colors. You will have to use the TV video or input button on your remote to change the input selection on your TV to the component signal. The next cable you can use for digital TV or high definition is the DVI cable or digital visual interface. This cable carries a digital signal not analog, which means it carries a code that applies the bright color and brightness to each individual pixel or part of a picture. Each frame of video is made up of pixels, tiny dots that together, like a puzzle, create an image. With an analog signal, each pixel is given an average color and brightness, but can be affected by its adjacent counterparts. Make sure that you have the pins lined up before plugging in. This connector is only compatible with the Motorola 6200 high definition receiver. The thing to remember with the DVI cable is that it only carries video. You will need separate cables for audio, either plugging in the red and white composite cable or an optical cable. An optical cable is a cable that transmits a digital signal by the use of light. Tiny strands of glass about the length of a human hair transmit digital signals in the form of light. 
The glass never absorbs the light, but acts like a long hallway of mirrors reflecting the light, sending it on a long journey with no signal loss. These cables can get dirty heads and not work great over time, so we recommend using the standard composite cables. The next cable is the HDMI cable, which is compatible with the DCH6416, the high definition DVR. The HDMI cable, or high definition multimedia interface, carries both a digital video and digital audio signal. Make sure your TV has a port that looks like this. Place one end into the cable box, then the other to your TV, and you now have a high quality digital signal for audio and video. Thank you for watching this training video. Now you can shop with confidence and get the most out of your television and cable box setup.